Hi hey everyone, Team UDF here for some more Trials in the Sky with Jumps Day. The professor suggests me inside. Hey Renee. What is it? Were you the one controlling that Joshua puppet in the base? Uh huh, that's right! <laughs> I almost said me out, that's right. <laughs> So you're a victim of the society too. Huh? Never mind. Well, here I go. See you later. Stab. No. Is there treasure in here? <laughs> that would be pretty great. I, I, no. You cannot be pilfering this. Ah! This is dumb. I don't believe this. I don't believe this. Come on, Jump, stiff up a lip now. We've got the organs playing believe. in the background. I don't believe. <clears throat> Spookums music time. Oh. Like every villain need an organ. Look how big uh, that organ is. My God. Wow. Uh. He stopped. Welcome aboard the Glorious. I will introduce you to Bobby Wood, but it has been some time since you last met the spell. Ah, Professor Alba, I thought it was you. I finally remember when I heard your voice a minute ago. Cassius Bright's daughter continues to impress. The seal on your memory wasn't particularly strong, but throwing it off on your own is still worth some manner of praise. My apologies. I've yet to properly introduce myself. My true name is Georg Weisman. I am one of the Anguous, supervisors of the society. An Anguous? So you're like one of the high commanders of the society? Hmm, something like that. Now, as I said before, I am completely prepared to answer any questions you may have. What would you like to ask first? Uh, honestly, there's so much to ask. I'm not even sure where to start. You needn't fret. Take your time thinking things over. If it pleases you, I could play a relaxing attitude while you collect your thoughts. Yeah, I think I'll pass. You know, you didn't strike me as someone who'd be into that sort of thing. Ah, uh, whatever. Here's a question for you. Was the whole poor archaeologi uh, archaeologist... God dang it. <laughs> a total act or what? Like my English skills? Haha, <laughs> putting the poverty aside, I actually am an archaeologist. And as an aside, I picked up the pipe organ during my time with the church. I may not be that Erebonian you spend so much time with, but I dare say I'm decent, wouldn't you? Hang on, the church? Like, the Septian? I was something of an academic priest. A chance meeting with the Grand Master led me to dis discarding the path of faith. My knowledge of artifacts, paltry as it is, still proves useful from time to time, thankfully. With our current plan in particular. The one who tempted Colonel Richard into starting the coup. <clears throat> the one who arranged all the gospel experiments. It was you. It certainly was. And it was all for the sake of our cause. Your gospel plan? I saw something in the research facility about that. Your plan's to take the Ariole, isn't it? Take the Ariole? That's not entirely accurate. But for the purposes of this conversation, it would suffice. Yes. What is the Ariole anyway? Why do you want it so bad? I know it's said to be one of the treasures of Adios, but just what is it? Ah, uh, for the moment, I must keep the exact nature of the areola secret. <laughs> I would, after all, so hate to spoil the surprise. The surprise, right, thanks. 
our plan has moved into its third phase. Very, very soon now, its true nature will be a plain to see. Ha <laughs> ha, I can barely contain my anticipation. And once the aureole has shown itself, then, then we will see the potential of mankind unfold before our eyes. The potential of mankind? Ragnar said something about that too. Oh, the holy beast was willing to bestow his wisdom upon you? Perhaps you are doing more than simply living in your father's shadow. Spare me the flattery. And what the hell? I keep asking you things and you keep dodging the answers. Do forgive me. It wasn't my intention to be so evasive. I can, however, easily answer the question I know you want to ask the most. The, the what? What keeps you from asking it? Don't be afraid. Muster your courage and ask it of me. <laughs> Joshua. Where's Joshua? Hmm. His exact location is currently unknown to me. From what I've observed, he's up to something with those sky bandits. Their movements have proven to be quite elusive. Though he is alive and well, I can assure you. Okay. Joshua's specialties are covert operation and guerrilla warfare. I was the one who turned him to excel at such, but he has long since surpassed even my greatest expectations. <laughs> I gleefully await seeing the height of his potential. You... Come now, you needn't look so angry. When Joshua was entrusted to my care, his heart was akin to gla a glass ornament dashed against a paving stone. He was my first attempt at rebuilding such a shattered soul. It was not natural, you think, for an academic to be curious about the result of his work. What did you tell Joshua on the day of the Queen's birthday celebrations? I merely removed the block on his memory and told him the truth. That he, once taken into your home, had unwittingly been acting as a spy and sending guild information to the society. The richest coop succeeded in its own right because of him, and finally that, thanks to his efforts, the ground was at least fertile for our plan. I even rewarded him. I formally released him from his obligations to the society. I finally get it. Why Joshua, that night, why he disappeared, why he said goodbye with that look on his face. Mm. Yes, I must say I did find that regrettable. To think Joshua would abandon you so coldly after regaining himself. I recommended he just pretend he knew nothing of it and continue his life with you. But alas, I suppose my generosity backfired, no? I'm amazed. I'm amazed you can even say that. You were the one who chased Joshua to a corner in the first place. He didn't have a choice. So he had to, to look like that. To give his harmonica to me. And say, goodbye, Estelle. All of it! Every last bit! It's all your fault! Ugh. Mm -hmm. Oh, the hell did you come from? I was here from the start. You simply didn't bother to notice. <laughs> what a big undignified performance! A bitch's blue block. <laughs> you performed so well in complete, completing my challenges too. Did I not teach you to think before you act? Come on, give us some credit. It takes balls to pick a fight with him. Agreed. Regardless of her skills, her courage certainly is impressive. Though I wonder if we should call it courage or mere foolishness. Ah, oh, crap. Yes. <laughs> I don't know who it is. God dang it. I, I just want to... I thought about it for a minute. Oh, this guy. This would be the first time we've met. 
I am Enforcer Number Zero, Carpanella the Fool. Nice to meet you, Art. Another one. Stop it, you guys. You're scaring us now. Renee, too? You needn't worry us now. I know what I said last time, but we are here to put to hurt you or anything. Promise! Huh? Hey, Professor! Why not ask us now right now? Hmm. Now is as good a time as any. How about it, Estelle? Would you like to join the Robolos? <gasps> what? I'm sorry, I misheard that. Would you like? Would you say that one more time? I asked if you would like to join the Society of Ouroboros. You wouldn't become a full-fledged enforcer right away, of course. You would be more of a candidate for the position. Whoa. Are you insane? Come now. It's hardly the leap of logic you're thinking. Joshua has been rather stubborn about returning, but with you here, he would undoubtedly come back to us, and to you. Oh, um, um... Estelle, you want to see a Joshua again more than anything else, right? If you join us, that'll come true right away! What's there to even think about? But, but, I... Now, Renee, Estelle might need some time to weigh her options. We will be departing the ship for a little while on business, Estelle. You may give us your answer when we return. And I do apologize for this, but your options must remain fairly limited during your stay. Feel free to request anything you need, but you'll be staying in your cabin. Can I have a telephone to call the guild? Sure. Wait a minute. <laughs> They got a guard right in front of her door. If I join the society, I'll meet Joshua again. That's all but guaranteed. Besides, I don't have to join him for real, right? I can just, like, pretend to join him and learn more about how they operate. I'm not the best actress in the world, so it might be hard, but it's better than just being locked up. For Blitz's sake. No, that's stupid. That isn't the way I do things. Uh, I, is, is it the soldier, I think? Oh, it's this guy. Huh? You? <laughs> no need to look... No need to be so on guard. I have no intention of harming you. Though, if you try something like that little stun of yours earlier, I may have no other choice. Yeah, well, sorry. What are you doing here anyway? Weren't you guys going out somewhere? The professor and the others are the ones who will be advancing the plan. I'm staying behind and minding the glorious. What is it you people are planning on doing? If you wish to find out, why not accept the professor's invitation? You'll learn most of our plans if you do. Aww. <laughs> it seems you have your answer, but you're still hesitating, aren't you? Um. If you want to take my advice, Estelle Bright, you are not suited for the Society of Ouroboros. At all. In both ability and personality. Man, you have to be so completely blunt about it. Don't misunderstand me. The potential for the necessary skills is within you, somewhere. But your personality? You have too little darkness within you to be part of Ouroboros. Darkness. Darkness? All of those in service to the Grand Master bear some kind of darkness on their shoulders. Myself, the Professor, the other Enforcers, Joshua too, needless to say. Hey, what's your relationship to Joshua anyway? Oh, our relationship? Joshua was weirdly focused on you. He seemed to know who you are, who you were, even though he didn't recognize you with the mask on. And on top of that, it seemed like he was desperate to find out who you were. That doesn't surprise me. The Professor sealed part of his memory away. He was hypnotized in such a way that the moment he left the society, he could remember little about us. 
Even if he remembered his actions as part of the society, he could not remember his confederates. That would have been the core of his dilemma. That's... The memories of his childhood would be the same. Even if he remembers Karin, he would likely have only loosely remembered me. I see, so that's why. Wait, Karen, I've heard that name before. Karen Estray, a childhood friend of mine and Joshua's older sister. A dead sister, probably. Yeah, okay. She died ten years ago. Whoa! The harmonica you have was originally Karin's. Joshua held on to it as a memento, and then it was passed on to you. Joshua had an older sister? How? How did Karen... Uh, how did she pass away? I hope you know what you're really asking. The answer to that question requires staring into the abyss in which Joshua and the rest of us reside. And it will stare back. Are you prepared for that? Tell me. I don't know if I'm ready for what's coming or whatever, but... I want to know what kind of path Joshua's followed. If nothing else, I have to know that. As you wish. It was a little over ten years ago. Back when you could still find the village of Hamel on maps of Erebonia and Liberal. Hamel was a tiny little place. There weren't many other young people, so the three of us were always together. I dreamed of becoming a bracer, and I spent my free time practicing my swordsmanship. Corrine and Joshua would watch and encourage me. That was how we whiled away the days. Once I was done with practice, we would turn our ears to Corrine's harmonica. Corrine could play anything on that harmonica. Anything. But my favorite was always the old Erebonian folk song, The Whereabouts of Light. It seems like that bliss would last forever. We believed that. We had no reason to doubt it. That day dawned and began just like any other, and then they came. A band of invaders, garbed in black and armed with librarian weaponry, came from nowhere. They encircled the village and slaughtered everyone in sight. None were spared, not even the old and infirm, not the young and defenseless, not even infants. Those who were killed quickly in the opening moments were the luckiest by far. And the women, even in this telling, there are some things I will not recount. We fled desperately from that hell. We were lucky to be in the position to escape when the attack began. We fled for the outskirts of the village. The screams of our own families carried to our ears and on the wind. Once we got into the outskirts, I told Karin and Joshua I would act in bait to confuse any pursuers. I promised them I would catch up to them soon and set them ahead. But the attackers, they had laid their plans well. They had people in position to deal with any who tried to flee. <laughs> Wide screen, yay! When I finally caught up to them, the scene was strangely quiet. A man, dead, shot through the throat. Joshua with a gun in his hand, dumbstruck, and Karin holding Joshua with a horrific wound in her back. She was barely breathing at that point. Even now, the scene seems surreal to me. Karin was calm and content. She entrusted her harmonica to Joshua, then asked that I take care of him. And then, she died quietly there in that clearing. Wh 
Why? On... Why, why did that... The Empire invaded Libra almost immediately afterwards. A defenseless little village, its inhabitants slaughtered by men with Liberian arms. It was almost too perfect an excuse to invade. It can't be. Liber Liberian troops doing that? When the local garrison found us, they were adamant the invaders were Liberian. When the war ended a few months later, with the Empire's defeat, however, we were given a different tale entirely. They told us instead that a band of Jaeger dropouts had turned to pure brigandry. And they told us to never speak to anyone else of the attack. The Erebonian authorities announced that Hamel had been destroyed in a landslide and all roads leading there were closed completely. Hold on, what? Why would they lie about that? Neither explanation makes sense. That's almost like... Eh, indeed. Everything was a fabrication by the Warhawks and the Empire to justify the invasion of Libero. At the end of the war, the ruse was discovered and the Imperial government was thrown into a panic. They conceded to call comprehensive peace and execute nearly everyone involved in the plot all to pretend that it never happened. That, Estelle Bright, is the tragedy of Hamill in full. That was also when Joshua's heart was broken entirely. He was now burdened with the torturous death of his sister, his parents, and everyone he knew, and even the shock of taking another man's life. How could that not shatter the soul of a six-year-old child? You've likely heard the rest from Joshua. His spirit was so wholly broken, he lost all will to do anything but play that harmonica. He began to waste away. That was when the two of us were found by Wiseman. To save Joshua's life, I'd entrusted him to Wiseman's care and threw myself into Ouroboros' training. And then, two years later, Joshua repaired as he was by Wiseman, followed the same path. This is darkness, Estelle Bright. Do you understand what sort of gulf separates you and Joshua now? Do you understand what he stares into every day? I do, yeah. Now I think I really understand why Joshua left. Hmm? Hey, next time you see him, tell Weissmann thanks, but no thanks. I'll never join Ouroboros. It's not because I like or dislike the society. But as long as I'm gonna pull Joshua back over that gulf you mentioned, forget it. Although I do feel kinda bad about letting Renee down after she went all through this trouble to invite me. Hey, you think she'll forgive me if I say I'm sorry? <laughs> You're one of a kind, Estelle Bright. To hear those horrors and thus lose your hesitation? You truly are more than just a daughter of the Divine Blade. Uh, thanks for the compliment, I guess. And you say all that, but you care about Joshua too, right? You guys were friends. Or maybe more like brothers. Let me be absolutely clear. That was ten years ago. To me now, he is nothing more than a rogue element to be eliminated. What? The professor seems to enjoy letting Joshua do as he pleases. I have a different plan in mind. Sooner or later, I will deal with Joshua personally. Wait a second, what the hell is this? Karina asked you to take care of him, doesn't that mean anything to you? I have my own path I've chosen for myself. I've, ded I've dedicated myself to my goal, and any who stand in my way shall die by my blade. Not even Karin's final request will stop me. How can you... Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay, that's a lot of shit. The first two just clipped right into it. <laughs> Oh. Uh. 
Yeah, that totally broke the immersion. <laughs> Those are... The Professor and the others, yes. Looks like the third stage of the plan is getting underway. The third stage? What? Heh. <laughs> that is not for you to know. Once we're finished, you'll be returned to your father. Behave until then. Oh, so the villains are going to lose because they're too stupid to kill her. Now, just a... Here's one final note. Don't even think of attempting to escape. The Glorious is 8,000 yards above ground. You have nowhere to run. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. Terrible things happen because the screen is wide. Don't even think of attempting to escape, he says. As if he doesn't know it's human nature for me to want to do the exact opposite. Besides, he's the only enforcer on board. Alright, why not? Let's do this. Estelle, you really are an idiot, you know that, right? If you're thinking about taking him on... <laughs> he will cut you in two. Okay, the time is going to be everything. If I can figure that out, I'll be good. Let's see, I'll wait a couple hours until they let their guard down, and then... Right, it's worth a shot. So this was a memento of Karin, huh? You shouldn't throw away something like this so easily, you idiot! You stupid idiot! You're on the list! You just made the list! Hey, it's time to change shifts. How's the girl acting? Ha, huh, quiet as a mouse. She might be a bracer, but she's still just a kid. Probably curled up in the bed, scared out of her mind. Che, babysitting while everyone else is out sucks. It's so boring, I wanted to get out there into action. Quit your whining. These Leonhardt sword is in the hell if I'm gonna follow his instructions to the I'm not, <laughs> whatever, English, eh? What was that sound? Hey, what are you doing? Somebody's like a rag doll. You don't think? She escaped! Hooray! Damn it! That stupid girl, does he not get where she is? Is she trying to kill herself or something? Uh, Gehanna, take me right now. She probably fell. She's totally under the bed, isn't she? You have got to be kidding me. What are we gonna tell Leonhardt? That'll keep us. That'll let us keep our heads. That damn brat. Nothing but a load of trouble. Damn brat, huh? No, she's not. Oh. Okay. Jeez. You. Nice try, old man. <laughs> Never underestimated Bracer. First of all, don't you think that was a little rude? Calling a sweet maiden like myself a damn brat. It wasn't me. I didn't call you that, I swear. Oh, you didn't? Well, you didn't correct your buddy then. Either way, it's nap time for you. <laughs> Take the Sabbath. All right. Reinforcements are probably going to get here pretty quick, so I should book it. There's got to be some way off this boat. Not a boat. And I won't give up. Not until I see Joshua. Not until I see that dummy again. You won't stop for anything, Lo. Well, neither will I. Take their keys. I'm going to rob them. Give, give Julius some uh, souvenirs. Rob them of their keys. <laughs> That's exactly what he would do. You know what would be funny if if somebody I mean if he tried to pilfer them for pilfer people for their keys and he and he finds only card keys and not actual keys and he's like <laughs> huh, boring and then somebody calls him an idiot you probably a blade is like you I don't know what you expected and blade is like you freaking idiot these are card keys we need those <laughs> but they're not real keys I can't use them j j give, give me those keys give me that card this is back into that one room yeah. <laughs> What's that? <gasps> elevator!
elevators. Wow. wow. It's a elevator. Wait. Did we just go up? Or did it, maybe the screen was moving in a different way that I didn't notice it? I'm pretty sure the screen moved upward. Okay. Vidcons! Oh, jeez. Alright. What is this? I will fight it. <laughs> oh, that, that'd that be an enemy. Yep. You could have gotten behind it. Oh, I Goodness. see. So this is also a... Uh-huh. Uh yeah, they know. They know something's up, and they're trying to stop you. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> I'm going to probably miss so much treasure. You might end up having a comeback here, I'm pretty sure, like, at the tail end of the game. Is this worth even checking? Fly! Whoa! Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 Turn it wrong way. This looks like the main deck. Someone please tell me why this thing has to be so ridiculously huge and easy to get lost in. At this point, my only real hopes are to either find a parachute or somehow take control of one of the smaller airships. Or you just jump and dragged all your way on down. <laughs> I want secrets, dang it. Where are my secrets? No secrets anywhere. What's you gotta do is just jump down and hope me for greats kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> Idios guide me. <laughs> she just finds a freaking... Oh. Okay. Crap. You're surrounded. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fine enough, girly. Not too bad, though, escaping from custody on the glorious and all. The daughter of Cassius' flight does not disappoint. You understand, of course, that trying to resist is pointless. Be a good little girl and lay down your weapon. It's oh, oh, good. Huh? Oh, you know, I can... I, who is this guy? I don't just read the dialogue. <laughs> I don't know. You know, exactly. You know, you don't. Oh, for God's sake. Whatever. Ah! This guy! Him! I doubt you could have a good. I doubt you have a daughter you count to me again, even in your worst nightmares! Hmm? Mayor Darmore's former steward. Him! 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 Oh, I think I remember you. You're a uh, male Darmore or something or other, I think. How can you be so uncertain? Yes, I am Gilbert! Former steward of Mayor Dalmore! You can't even remember those you have arrested! Unbelievable! Well, excuse the heck out of me for being surprised. I mean, first of all, didn't we hand you over to the army for a trial and stuff? How'd you even manage to get here? Yeah, you doubt my resourcefulness. During the coup, I managed to escape into the chaos. Shortly thereafter, poor boss found me, and I pledged my allegiance to them! I don't know whether to call that tenacious or just thick-headed. Are you seriously a Jaeger? You're not going to actually fight, are you? And again, you underestimate me. I am a prodigy of the sword as much as a pin, a master of both. But, um, I remember how you screamed back when you got roughed up by those special ops guys at the lighthouse. Do you really think you're cut out for combat? It was all high-pitched too, like... The silence! I have been a part of a huge number of combat enhancement programs since I first entered the society's service. My physical abilities have greatly increased, and my knowledge of battle tactics is unparalleled! Do you... So don't think you can bet me again, brace of scum! Ah, for the love of... Ah, just play along for now. Now then, it's the light! If you want to live, throw aside your stick, and get down on your knees, and beg for mercy! If you 
you do that. I might forgive your best guests. Oh, what an offer. I moved to tears over here, really. But, uh, sorry. I'm pretty thick-headed, too. <laughs> Maybe I can't beat one of your crazy enforcers on my own, but I can sure throw down with the likes of you. So bring it on, Screamer! <laughs> I will break your neck! I will make you scream and curl in blood! I will struggle you with what that pogo stick! <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what color your blood is! <laughs> yes, that's the blood of my right next to my opponent. That is surely the best plan I've ever. <laughs> All right, I'm not entirely sure if I'm supposed to win this. They seem like they have low enough health, though. You can beat them. You got this. Are we to what water it was? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good thing you got all these water lights. Yeah, apparently. Um, I can hit the both of these guys. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I just have to go ahead and beat a show! Is it all become an impossible of for us? I'm only feeling it! I'm really feeling it! <laughs> I'm really mooshing it! Prepare yourself! Yeah! Prepare yourself! Yeah! Oh, my son! Yes, I'm gonna play the British CP, don't mind me! <laughs> Why does he get to move twice? <laughs> oh, no, what do I would not Oh, I would not expect anything of you! You see, I remember I used to play on the family RPG on where the tunnel server! <laughs> get out of here! Shut <laughs> up! <laughs> I remember managing to handle Sir Eli with ease! You stand no chance against me as so right! Grenade! And so change! Let me go ahead and place a mind right next to my teammate! Let me just place it right by my body here! Yes, I'm just gonna place it right here next to my teammate. It's not it's like I, I want to win or anything. Ah, we good. Oh, th that mine actually is gonna go off. That's nah, this one. Self destruct. Yes, it totally didn't do anything and it dropped oh, some separate. Man, I got a thing too. Well, hmm. Or no, he he took it. Never mind. Okay. Can I get my hands on that? No. Oh man. Not if I attack, huh? Don't you know me. he ain't gonna actually hurt you, right? He's just gonna set another stupid mine. <laughs> Dude, do, do Yeah, but do I wanna that. hit them, because they're gonna move. Oh. Can't you, like, clock... You can't clock them down, huh? Well, do you have clock well, them? Well, it doesn't yeah. matter if I do, because they're still gonna go before... Oh, no, they're actually not gonna go before me if I clock down. Yeah, huh? yeah. clock weird. them down. Right. I mean... It's better than nothing. He's not gonna attack. He's just gonna set another stupid mine and run back to his stupid position. <laughs> Do the thing. Do you down? He's just gonna die from the. <laughs> <laughs> he just died. <laughs> that was fantastic. He loved it. Oh no. Yeah, that didn't do anything. Oh, let me control one right here, right in front of you. Don't mind. You just between you and that guy. <laughs> you just do your thing and I'll do mine. <laughs> this is stupid. I have to admit, this is, is kind of dumb. Like, does he have any idea how stupid he looks right now? Why, why are you setting ma mines in the middle of a freaking battle? He's a he's a stupid idiot. Oh, he actually did oh. that one. Oh, well, well then. Um, I, I guess it's better than nothing. He's gonna do a thing. I might be wasting my time with this strategy actually, but it's killing him in two hits pretty much. That one's gonna blow up. 
You have the one all the way up there, Ooh. yeah. Why did he even get HP from that? That that <laughs> you get HP from that. Oh. The battle ended. Uh, uh, damn it, this is rough by myself. What a resilient woman! She's running on empty now. Enough playtime. Surrender her. Surround her and take her down. Surrender her. I shut up. Is, is that Josh? What the hell are you? Looks like you're having a hard time. Allow me to assist. That won't be necessary. She put up quite a fight, but we'll wear her down eventually. You're welcome to watch, of course. Oh, what was it coming to you? Oh, well. It's time for Gooby! Too slow! <laughs> what? what? What are you doing? I'm sorry, but you're not cut out for this. <laughs> Get it? Get it? Cut out? Cut out? Thanks for watching, everyone. Boy! Oh, <laughs>